God, this year was awful. Twenty twenty one has been like falling through the ice floor into the newly renovated tenth circle of hell. However, we did get through it all. Now, I could have made this a top twenty worst, as there was no shortage of trash to choose from, like trying to decide which Seth Rogen movie is the worst. But there were enough squeezed out that I could make a proper listing. So let's not waste any more time and jump into the deep end, starting with. I cannot wrap my head around how people think Cop Shop is good. It could be that I haven't done this as long as others, so my soul hasn't been chipped away enough to allow inanimate objects to magically changing mid-scene to get a pass from me. Until that day, I ain't letting that kind of crap fly. And with Cop Shop being as bad as it was, I might have to re-watch Smoke and Aces and see if my memory is holding up or if I need to be taken out to pasture. Interest is temporary, and unless you can really spice up a franchise that ran out of ideas after the third movie, you should probably just stop. If you've seen the first Saw, then you've seen Spiral. The mystery is figured out in moments, and the victims are placed into traps that would require help or stupidity to accomplish, and I don't have enough brain cells to offer this film. Last Night in Soho is mostly solid if it wasn't for the ending, and yes, I will get around to that video later. Good performances all around with solid writing and the direction as per the usual from Edgar Wright. I almost feel bad for James Wan. He's been so focused on pleasing everyone that he sometimes forgets that a movie should be good. Apparently, James stated that he wanted to make a movie that combined all his years of experience to give to the fans. James, take me out to pasture if I'm wrong, but I recall the first Saw and Conjuring films being good. Say, I don't know why you didn't apply your skill from those movies, but maybe next time you should sober up a little bit after taking a hit from DMT. I grew up watching martial arts films like so many other people. Watching such scenes of strength, speed, and agility was at times jaw-dropping. And understanding that, while a little exaggerated in some cases, these scenes are possible to perform is inspiring. Shang-Chi is not. Besides the title of the film being a lie, I at least enjoyed the near three-hour test of endurance. Good performances, the movie didn't bend a knee to the woke tards of the world, and managed to salvage a halfway decent send-off to Craig's Bond. I am so fucking sick of people shoving hypocritical and one-sided politics down my throat. I'll make an occasional jab, sure, but it's short and simple. This was an almost two-hour lecture that breaks and ignores both the lore of the established franchise it co-ops while also presenting a one-sided argument that actually makes villains out of those who we're supposed to sympathize with. Speaking of villains, why was I supposed to feel sorry for Evan? The dude uses a situation for personal gain and may have been the straw that broke the camel's back, leading to the suicide at the center of the film. No one wins. Everyone lost. The music is crap, the performances are lackluster, and this film should have been only about one-third of a full movie leading into a proper redemption arc. Instead, we get a neutered musical that doesn't have a single brain cell behind all of its writers. It may not be Guy Ritchie's best return to form, like the recent The Gentleman, but at least Wrath of Man was competently made. A little long and hastily concluded, but as a film, it was like finding an oasis in a desert. If I'm being honest, the top three worst were almost put together as the single worst because by all objective measurements, these films should have been buried next to E.T. for the Atari. I said it before, and I will say it again. The production team were fans working with the game developers and still managed to produce a story, characters, and action so awful, I genuinely thought that putting this license in the hands of Tommy Wiseau might have yielded better results. Disney has no soul as long as money is involved. They don't care how far up their ass Xi Jinping goes because they have their eye on the prize. We made a movie for your country! Did I say you could talk? If it wasn't for the title of this film, I wouldn't even remember who the main character was. Do you remember anything from this film? How many clans there were? How about the name of the creatures? See, no one remembers a single thing about this movie like an amnesiac going on a bender. 
Being equally weighed by good and bad in this film, it really says something when one of the best films of the year is a decent, albeit adored, Marvel film. Being an odd concoction of key dangling, decent action, rule breaking, and solid writing, Spider-Man No Way Home shows us that Marvel can make something worth our time, as long as there is a little passion behind it. Didn't think this would be the worst of the year? Nah, Black Widow looks at the bar set so low by Black Panther and Captain Marvel you could trip over it into a positive rating and accepts that as a challenge for squeezing under it to help prove Marvel and Disney don't truly care. With some of the worst characters ever put into a Marvel film, laughably bad character choices, a villain forgotten as fast as he was introduced, etc, etc. One could complain about this film for hours and still find something to smash about like a pillaging vice who didn't need a Snickers. Eternals, I think, genuinely contributed to my recent burnout. Watching corporate mediocrity on display only solidified in my mind how much Marvel should have quit while they were ahead. No one looks like they're trying. If the characters aren't dumb enough, now the lore and rules of the MCU have fundamentally changed for the worse. These changes don't work, let alone as a retrofit to the MCU at large. I did finish the script when I wrote it, but thinking about making the video, I, I felt like some poor bastard in a Lovecraft story slowly going insane until I was consumed with pointlessness. If you know me, you knew this was coming. Dune 2021 is a damn good movie. It does the book pretty good justice, at least so far. The characters, while a little dry, are still good, and everything across the board is passionately executed with competence. At least for the few movies I saw this year, Dune stands as the enduring beacon of light on a shore ravaged by a hurricane, which may be immediately followed up by another Category 5 with a lineup that is 2022. I mean, if 2021 looked like the East Coast, after three hurricanes, then 2022 is gonna look like God flipped the table. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out the 2021 playlist over there to share in my pain. And I'll see you in the next video.